you must find your own unique angle. It doesn't mean that do something that nobody has done before, but do something that the data tells you that would be a good bet and then give it your own unique twist. I would say that's, and that, that's the hardest one, I would say. That's the hardest one, but that's important, okay, of course. How can you win in mobile gaming in 2022? Games are, of course, super interesting. They're kind of the canary in the coal mine. Change and innovation in mobile seems to happen fastest there. We're seeing mashups, we're seeing NFTs, we're seeing crossover tactics to and from casual and strategy games and other genres. And we're seeing all kinds of innovation in measurement and monetization to enable growth in the era of app tracking transparency. We're going to dive into all of that with an expert today. Peggy, who's our expert? We are chatting today, John, with Joel Yulkinen. He is the head of analytics at Game Refiner, and so the data guy there. And Game Refiner, of course, provides feature-level analytics, market insights, benchmarks for the mobile gaming industry. As I said, he leads the analytics department there, so he's deep down in the data, but he's not just deep down in the data, John, because he's deep into gaming. Because what they do over there is they play and analyze games to figure out the features that are the winning features. He's done, of course, over 500 mobile games, played and analyzed them. But he's also, interestingly enough, the former archery champion of the Finnish Air Force. So he should hit the mark. Welcome, Joel. Great to have you. Thanks. Thanks, Peggy and Jonah. Thanks for the, for the introduction. That was <laughs> great, great details there. Welcome. I mean, sheesh. Wow. Uh, I guess you play games for a living. It's got to be easier than the Finnish Air Force. Um, so, <laughs> but there's probably some work in there as well. Uh, all this analysis. Joel, let's start at a super high level. What's changing in games this year and into 2022? We're seeing these mashups. We're seeing collectibles, NFTs, ATT. What are the big changes coming? Yeah, there's a, like you said, a lot of lot of changes in 2021, and and I would say on a high level, the biggest ones uh, would be um, the rise of the live ops in in general, then uh, the kind of mashups of casual and and, and mid core genres come becoming closer to to each other in the, in a spectrum of of simple games and complex games, and then of course I would say like a bigger ever arching trend of social social features uh, taking place across all of genres in, in a more complex level than before. So you talked about some of the drivers, you know, it's just these mashups, these mix-ups, things are changing, but what do you mean, first of all, by mashups? Let's try and unpack that. Yeah, yeah, mobile games are special in, in that sense that um, we are seeing a lot of um, genre mashups, meaning that let's say we have a match three game which is matched up with rpg so we got the puzzle rpg or or we have a we have a driving game that has rpg elements so um the developers are all the time coming up with different mixes of of genres and and it is actually interesting in a sense that in in mobile game world um the same features and game mechanics can be found in in mid core games, hardcore games, and casual games. And by kind of mixing and mixing and matching the best proven mechanics and feature combinations, uh, developers are able to find totally new feel to their games. Kind of mixing up uh, proven concepts of all that the players love, and and mm-hmm. coming together, coming up with something new with, as a kind of result of these mashups. Peggy, it's like uh, our just previous interview with Social Point. Uh, we were inventing yeah. games on that podcast, actually. We were mashing them up live, and we didn't even know it was a thing. You probably started a trend, actually. <laughs> but to your Don't point, know about that. But it is really interesting. But if you think about, John, this is a way of widening the net and sort of powering a different type of UA. And we'll get to why, because one reason is, of course, uh, tracking transparency. But... In a way, it powers a different UA, it attracts a different audience, and it creates, I would imagine, some other benefits. I mean, Joel, in your words, what would you say are the other benefits beyond just maybe some interesting gameplay and some cool titles that we're going to maybe think up here? Yeah, yeah, there, there are, of course, benefits. One, one big one 
uh, would be if we look at uh, player demo- uh, kind of motivations, uh, that why players play different games. The mm-hmm. traditional view has been that if you have like let, let's say casual mastery game, uh, you have a certain demographic that the game appeals to, and and thinking about motivations, it's thinking and solving and kind of uh, escaping the stressful stressful world for for a couple of seconds. Whereas in if you take like shooter game the reason why people come to a shooter game might be very different. Uh, when you have these mashups, um, like let's take an example of Project Makeover, which is one of the, was one of the best performing games in, in 2021, and, and the success seems to be continuing. What they did, they uh, mixed um, fashion games or uh, fashion and decoration theme with the traditional swapping match tree, match tree game. Um, what they were able to achieve by doing that was that uh, they were able to reach a broader audience, uh, or not mm-hmm. only people who like to break out of match puzzle pieces and, and do that, but also people who kind of like to be uh, immersed to the game, like to express themselves to customizing their avatar, love fashion, love decoration, love collecting stuff. Um, and, and that, we call it kind of meta layer, that, that uh, fashion meta layer didn't have to break the match tree experience, but it was kind of an addition to that. And by doing that, Project Makeover was not only able to reach to a new audience base based on that new motivation, but also their current, the, the players that were already playing that game, um, they had the similar kind of uh, motivation preferences. So there was an overlap. They did the research they, and saw that, hey, the players who play our game are also interested about this in this kind of collectibles of fashion and that that also kind of uh, increased the engagement of their players that they already had so there's that aspect as well so from the motivation mm-hmm. point of view you're able to uh, win in that sense i love that i really like that because yeah. there's so many games out there you need to invent new niches right you need to invent a, a space where your game can fit but also guess what sometimes i do want that game that takes me out of the world for five minutes of fun right but sometimes i have more time and i can get more engaged so then i can have both in the same game it's genius we were also discussing this offline john that was also interesting an aspect of this strategy games can be hard right and so you remove the anxiety by sort of giving someone a bit of a snippet that's more like a casual it's almost like it's almost a clickbait (laughs) you know you start in the casual game and then, whoa, you're off in the strategy where it's a thinking kind of project, you know, but, but you pull people in and it's kind of clever. It's really mm-hmm. kind of clever. And I'm sure we'll be mm-hmm. seeing more about that because there's another driver there. You know, you mentioned it yourself and we talked about it just briefly, you know, responses to ATT, thinking of new ways to get people to do things very quickly because, of course, you have to measure it really fast. That window is very small. Tell me what's happening there and how marketers are approaching it. Studios as well, designing them, of course. Yeah, in, in like you mentioned, in these mid-core games are what we have seen. They have, have started to implement kind of more casual features to their games. Um, and then, like you pointed out, uh, one of the key reasons probably is that um, since this changes in, in post iOS, iOS 14, uh, it's much more difficult nowadays to find those we call them like whale players, like the genre mm-hmm. for X strategy game games, like the live hardcore ones. They make most of their money out of a small amount of players who spend a lot to the game. And now nowadays it's it's harder to kind of pinpoint those uh, and find those and, and ac- acquire those players. Um, so one one thing that games like State of Survival or, or Lords Mobile, I think is the best example, what they have done is they have started to implement like more casual mechanics. Like you said, it's easier to get into the game of like hardcore, really complex strategy game when you first are introduced to more, well, simpler mechanics that kind of grab mm-hmm. your attention. You get, get to know the game a little by little and then you kind of go down to the rabbit hole and, and, and see more. Like in Lords Mobile, I think it's actually nowadays called Lords Mobile Tower Defense. It's mm-hmm. an it's already several years old game, really, really successful um, for a strategy game. And now if you install the game and play it for the first time, it doesn't actually start from the strategy game core gameplay. It starts from really casual kind of tower defense. Um, ge- that gameplay that doesn't have anything to do with the actual Lords Mobile or the traditional Lords Mobile experience, the one where you 
are, are joining large alliances and fighting other people around the globe in, in, in kind of huge maps and train armies and, 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 and spend a lot of time with, with the kind of strategizing with your teammates. How it starts now is that, hey, you just put these troops into this field and, and, and it's almost autoplay and it's really easy to get into. And then little by little, you kind of get to be introduced to the, to the whole real Lords Mobile. So yeah, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. definitely a, a, a trend nowadays. It's kind of genius. Um, maybe you can have kind of the UA costs of a casual game, hyper casual game even, um, get people in, get a broad array of people in, and you could still find in that mass those mm -hmm. whales who will be incredible for you. You can't pinpoint them anymore. You can't really pinpoint them in the UA process as you could in the past. You've got to draw a wider net. Makes mm -hmm. a ton of sense. Let okay. some... Go ahead, Peggy. I was going to say, and you have to be fast about it because it's that 24-hour post back. So you need to be driving more activity in a shorter period of time. It's brilliant. Yep. You can stretch that that postback period to seven days, but I mean, that's really yeah. tough to optimize on, right? Uh, yeah. It's really challenging to optimize on. So let's talk about NFTs. Um, obviously, they've exploded on the world in a lot of different ways um, and have caused, well, let's say differing opinions uh, in, in a lot of ways as well. But there's a lot of innovation there. Uh, Dapper Labs is doing something super interesting with the NBA, Top Shots, right? UFC, they've got some amazing brands there. What's happening with NFTs in the whole area, area of collectibles? Yeah, it's uh, the NFTs, they are the hot topic at the mo moment. Like, like everybody's talking about, there's a huge amount of buzz going on. There's your skeptics saying that uh, it, 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 it's, it, it, won't, it won't make it. It's, it's, it's all about the games. It's about making big, uh, kind of quick bucks. Um, and then there's, of course, people who see the potential and, and see that there is uh, kind of, a, if, if, if everything goes the way these people predict uh, and, and see the world, there is the potential that it, it will change the gaming, how players uh, experience gaming and why they play completely. Um, of course, Axie Infinity High Rise, uh, there are a couple of titles now popping up and all the big companies, Zungas and EAs, are announcing that they are they are going to to that that area as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, we have seen these buzzes before, like when AR was big or when uh, virtual reality um, came came to the market for the second or third time. Um, so it's really hard to say what happens with N NFTs because, of course, like you pointed out, uh, there's still a kind of uh, I would say a label. Uh, attached to them that it's just kind of a, a bonsai scheme or, or, or people are just there to make money, trying to, to get those collectibles uh, and, and sell them to the higher price. And, 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 and there's not like, none, none of those games are kind of uh, showing any true innovation in terms of gameplay. Well, um, my view on that is that, that, that collectibles in mobile games are trending really heavily. And I'm, now I'm talking outside NFTs, like the collectible mechanics themselves. 2021 has been a year where uh, almost, well, most of the top casual games of different genres, social casino, uh, board games, uh, dice games, have implemented collectible meta layers and collectible mechanics and, and big ones as well. Like, like there's collectible events going on that you, you you kind of really engage with that collectible album aspect of the game. So there's that and people are, are like Pokemon, uh, people like to collect stuff. So it, it remains to be seen. I always say that if, if there's a game or a game company who can actually create a great gaming experience and then tie the NFT aspects to that, I think that's a winning formula. Are we going to see it in 2022? Nobody knows, but at least from talking purely from the collectible standpoint, the trends in the mobile game market are really heavily pointing to the direction that collectibles are the thing that people like, and they are the one that uh, one element that brings session to session progression, uh, meaningful content to the for the gamers themselves, meaningful way to to differentiate themselves in social. Um, uh, aspects of any game. 
So yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm, and again, Refinery will will be focusing and, and following that that space for sure. I, I sense a little bit of skepticism there, but also a lot of interest, and that makes a ton of sense, right? I mean, trends are trends, fads are fads, NFTs are super hot, and also mm -hmm. many people are dissing them. I mean, I've kind of wondered, Peggy, about making NFTs of each episode. <laughs> right minting an nft right here you know this picture look at that smile on joel i mean it's amazing you know nft boom that's at least 10 ether right ethereum i mean <laughs> there you go. so i don't know about that but we'll, we'll continue keeping an eye on that because you're right some people do like to collect stuff and mm -hmm. digitally one way of doing that is nfts there are multiple other ways as well but obviously NFTs is a very interesting twist on collection and monetization. And we've seen Dapper Labs mm -hmm. do that really, really well. I want to talk about social as well. Um, social has been around for forever, but it, like everything else in tech and especially mobile, continues to evolve. You're seeing some innovation in social and gaming. What are you seeing? Especially in casual space. Um, 2021 has seen rise in, in the amount of games adapting more, we call them like more complex social mechanics. And, and by more complex, I mean that all the Candy Crushes has all, have always had uh, like sending lives to your fellow players or, or something like that. But now what we're seeing is, is massive infusion of guild mechanics, like teams or alliances. So meaning like uh, communities where player can, players can join and then kind of mm -hmm. have a deeper engagement with the similar minded or players with similar playing styles. So across all the casual genres like social casino, match free, board games, guild mechan or team mechanics have, have been the, the biggest one. And then it usually goes so that once you implement those guild mechanics, it's, it acts as a kind of cornerstone or foundation for other social elements like co-op playing, uh, co-op mm -hmm. competition, uh, co-op events, communal development efforts. So anything that kind of enhances the sense of community even further. So that's what has been a big trend in 2021. And, and we see it continuing as, as we go to the 20, 2022. And also mentioning like uh, hangout areas where you can just kind of uh, not play the game, act the actual game, just meet people with your avatar and chat, chat with them. That's something that actually haven't been yet as big phenomena in the West as, as it has been in the, in the East, especially in China. I think we're okay. hearing a mini Joel in the background talking about social. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, problem about my daughter. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I was also going to say, I mean, one of the drivers obviously has to be the pandemic but now that we have these elements of social you know you sort of wonder because that's what you do at game refinery you look at the features but then you think about okay what are these mix-ups these mashups going to look like what is what are companies going to do to stand out when everybody's doing this i mean these are super popular features everyone has social people are thinking about collectibles and you see these mashups specifically in strategy and in social I just want to dive a little deeper into that for some examples of what they are, what's driving them. And more importantly, I'd love to hear about how you're going to stand out in 2022 when everyone's riding that wave. Yeah, it's, it tends to be in, in especially mobile game that, that when a big trend or trend, trend picks up, everybody's kind of hopping on the bandwagon. So how do you stand out, out from, the, uh, from the crowd? That's a good question. I always say that when you talk about features and on kind of generic level uh they are just features they are blueprints or frameworks for you for some concept that you have but your imagination is the limit that how do you then implement it so what are the how do you balance let's say battle pass systems or how do you what kind of guild mechanics you bring uh, bring into the in your alliances or or how do how, how do you do it or with the mashups um you can do similar kind of mashup that everybody is doing like, I don't know, mix uh, construction metal area events in your social casino game. But basically it comes down to the implementation and innovation on that area. So following trends is really important. Understanding the key features is important because that's 
those are proven mechanics that players love and proven mechanics that work in your game. But that doesn't mean that you have to do and balance them the same way that everybody is doing. So there's your, I would say, there's your kind of uh, sweet spot that you listen to the market and look at the trends and, and what works in the market, especially, especially in your genre. And then you start to figure out, okay, how do, you, how do I make this fit my game? How do I make this, let's say, mash up metal layer to my, uh, to my game without alienating my current gamer base without wrecking the game soul per, per, per se so there, there's the, there lies the kind of uh, uh, the key key to that and and of course um, every I have had so many discussions with developers who who asked me that hey how can I different differentiate and, and, and in, this, in this space I always say that mobile <laughs> games are perfect in, in a sense that you can you don't have to stick to your own genre when you are looking at your competitive field and your what the competitors are doing don't only look at your own sub genre like if you do a match three game don't only study match three study the the other spheres as well so if you're doing match three game study other casual games what they are doing is there something that i can bring to my game or even go to the mid core games like many of the casual game developers have done Look at it. Are there mechanics that that engage certain types of players with certain motivations? And then look at your own game and, and look at how can I make it work here. Even better, look at Chinese market and Japanese market. Bring mm. features from there to West that people here don't know. For for instance, that's what Fortnite kind of did when they introduced Battle Pass. That's actually uh, just a variation of of a couple of older Chinese monetization mechanics. Smart, smart. Mm-hmm. So I've heard that you track over 250 different types of features or components of games to see what leads to success. Uh, can you give us a glimpse behind that curtain? Uh, what are some of those that you track? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of features. Like you said, 250 or so. Uh, we track almost anything ranging from like the really core mechanics of, of the game, like uh, uh, like order play, do you play it one hand, two hand, how is the screen orientation, horizontal or portrait, all the way to social features like competitive PVPs, uh, communal aspects, to, to appointment mechanics like daily gifts and login reward systems, and, and of course events and everything around. So, a lot of lot of features, uh, and and as the as the system is dynamic or our taxonomy is dynamic, when we follow the market, when we find something new and exciting that we don't yet uh, cover with our system, we then can add it to to the to the taxonomy. Oh, just to give you an example, when I actually mentioned Fortnite, when when Battle Pass became the hot topic of a talk of the town, uh, we were very quick to start uh, kind of following that feature, and after a month or two. All of our users got to see interesting data and insights about that feature, implementations, trends, who is using that, how, uh, how, who is using that in China or Japan and, and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Nice. So we talked about collectibles, talked about social, 250 features. You just try even try to think that through, John. You know? <laughs> it's too many. <laughs> it's like, that's one hell of a taxonomy. I'm just trying to imagine what it all is. But we want to talk about the future. So I want to get a better understanding of the features that are really, really interesting now, growing fast, going to be the ones that define 2022. Well, if I had to pick just one uh, based on the how hot is that it has been in 2021, I would say the battle pass system or season mm-hmm. pass system depending on who you ask, but the mechanic is the same. So essentially, uh, the one made famous by Fortnite uh, in, in, in West. So basically, you have a season that lasts like one month. During the season, you have tasks or objectives to do, and then you win rewards on your reward path. And then, of course, the gist of it is that if you want to get to the premium rewards, usually including exclusive um, decorative items or characters or whatever, you have to purchase the battle pass with costs anything between one dollar to twenty dollars depending on on the game and then of course for that season then you you can and you have to play then to get those rewards and when the season ends uh, then a new season starts usually with the new content with the new exclusive stuff and you want to purchase again mm. so that's the number one and it has made it made its way from the mid core or shooting games now to 
all all games so you can pick up idle game a casual idle game and see it there you can pick social casino games see it there you can pick pick mastery and see it there as well so that that would be if i have to pick just one that's a great insight it, mm -hmm. it, to be honest that's one of the areas where i see stuff coming from the strategy or the mid core level coming down to casual maybe even hyper casual not sure about that and i'm like mm, hey i hate that i love this game i spend two minutes on it five times a day and you know what i'm just coming here for a hit of endorphins and a little break from what i'm doing and now i have to think about it i have to make decisions about a purchase i have to you know maybe I, and if if i buy in then i'm in the battle pass i mean it's this month or this week and now i have to like you know level up and work hard and you know earn make it worthwhile so um yeah we'll see how that works i'm sure it's doing great in terms of monetization and i'm sure that's a great thing for some games others uh, I'm, I'm not so sold on however we do have to bring this to a close. Uh, it has been amazing, by the way. It's been super insightful. Really ha love having you. We ask every guest, what are your top three tips? And I think what we're going to ask you specifically is what are your top three tips for mobile gaming marketers heading into 2022? Yeah, to, I, I, I would say, as I always say, fortunately nowadays, everybody in the industry is, is following data. But I would say that Data is is not only going to be your friend in 2022, but it's it's going to be essential that you follow the market. You have all the data available because everybody else is, and it's not anymore the same market that it was, let's say, eight years ago, seven years ago when I started uh, started uh, kind of uh, with the game refinery. So now that, that would be the one num number one. So use all the data at your disposal, and of course use it wisely. That, that's one. Um, mm -hmm. Then for the marketers, if we're if we're talking about like actual like marketing and you a function in a game games company, I would say that they they are working together with with game team, the developers, the cooperation between developers and the marketing and UA team is really important, and that's because as we've seen that you have to have seamless integration of those two teams, and so they both understand what they're doing. As live ops is really really big at the moment spitting out content having these events and then using those in a seamless way with the marketing team and with the ua campaigns that's really important um as as well and and third, third i would say that even if when you are following data and, and, and kind of looking at what the top games or, or top marketers are doing um, try to find and you must find your own unique angle it doesn't mean that do something that nobody has done before, but do something that the data tells you that would be a good bet and then give it your own unique twist. I would say that's, and that, that's the hardest one, I would say. That's the hardest one, but that's important, okay, of course. Well, this has been amazing. This has been incredible. Um, really do appreciate your time. I have to ask one one question. I mean, like we said off the top, Peggy said off the top that you were the archery champion of the Finnish Air Force. What did you do in the Air Force? Well, in Finland, uh, all males have to, uh, or are, are constricted in, in, in a way. So we have the uh, compulsory military service that we have to. So have sexist, to. so sexist. <laughs> <laughs> well there's there's debate on that as well but yeah still we're one of the few countries in europe that still have has that um mm -hmm. and then you can serve in navy or air force or or uh, the army and i chose air force and uh i had some background in archery and and we had this uh it was kind of a playful competition there's no like official uh archery championships of of the air force but yeah there was this competition i uh, just happened to uh uh, beat my superiors and, and that was a great day for us as, as uh, we were we were so green it was like my third week in the army but it was, it was, uh, it was great <laughs> nice. well peggy you fly airplanes and all of a sudden you start flying games i guess or playing them absolutely it's our top gun here with our top tips John. <laughs> I, I had to do it <laughs> nice nice awesome absolutely Face okay. mash coming up, by the way, on this. <laughs> Tom Cruise face mash. <laughs> Beware, it's coming. He means it. He means it. It's been great having you, Joel, and and you know, and really telling us a bit more, shining a light on some of these mashups. They're exciting. I'd like to just 
think out, you know, just imagine, John, what some of them could be. It's like that show we had where we were mashing them up in our mind and now we're being encouraged to do it even more so. It's, uh, I guess, everything's open in 2022. Strategy comes to uh, casual. We'll see maybe hardcore go to hyper casual. Who knows? It's all open. It's exciting. Maybe. Thank maybe. you guys for having me. It, it was really, really a pleasure to be here. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. And next time we have to see Mini Joel or Joelette or whatever your daughter's name is as well. We've got to see that. Uh, but I guess we'll also say is that if you are out there and you are a mobile hero, you know, and you should be the one we're talking to because you are amazing and incredible and well spoken and have great insights and all that stuff, reach out to Peggy, reach out to me, and we'd love to chat with you as well. Until then, stay tuned on the audio podcast, on YouTube, and everywhere else. And thank you so much.